I read about your sort of social anxiety mm -hmm. that came with came along with the fame, mm. and then I heard you'd created this Instagram account of taking people taking pictures of people taking pictures of you mm -hmm. covertly without asking permission, mm. and then I thought to myself, this is a great idea, but it's going to encourage it. Yeah, of course it did. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it totally did. Which I I don't mind as much that it encourages people. Um, because all it's done is just further reinforce why I've done it. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is like, hey, people are not going to care about anything other than the, uh, than bragging about a place they've been or a person they've seen. You know. How do you feel about that? Uh, I don't mind it because all of us kind of just do it. We're taught to do that sort of thing. Um, but I don't know if I'd necessarily make those people my friends. How does it how does it feel to be on the receiving end of it every day? I understand it. Did you always? Um yeah, actually I did. Did you ever I, struggle with it? Um of course I struggled with it, for sure. I'm asking this for myself. Yeah, though, yeah. Well, I've, well, I think look, man, we're always searching for um a much deeper emotional connection to another human being. You know, it would I would much rather have someone be like like this podcast is a great example. Tell me about what it was like growing up in your position. And if anyone ever asked me that, I would be an open book. Yeah, you truly could come up to me and ask me any question on the street, and I would probably hold a tete-a-tete -tete with you. Um, but people want to show other but people. Don't, <laughs> yeah, but, but don't. Um, don't do that. <laughs> uh, but I think people want to want to show what they're up to right now, and that's totally fine and natural. Um, well, I don't know if it's natural, but, uh, we're, you know, we're conditioned to do that. But I think, you know, whether it's, you know, you're doing it ironically or authentically, or you're truly excited or you admire someone, or you want to just prove to other people. I think most people have to understand that there is probably a greater connection to be made that exists. There's a choice that you make when, when you're asking for a very surface level, shallow interaction with someone. Um, and that the alternative did exist where you could probably deepen your relationship to, to, um, an individual that you've wanted to talk to. Uh, so I don't really mind when people do it. It just means that person's not going to be a cool connection to me personally, like I, I'm not going to remember that connection in my life when I'm telling stories and things. Whereas, you know, I did a movie called five feet apart, which, um, which dealt a lot with cystic fibrosis. And I've had a lot of, um, people who live with cystic fibrosis come up to me and talk to me about cystic fibrosis and, and talk to me about that film. And those are connections in my opinion that have lasted with me. I'll, I remember almost every single conversation I've had with something like that, because it's not a, uh, yo, let's take a pic. It is, Hey man, um, I want to let you know that I go through this, something that you were trying to portray in this and, and you know, this, it affected me like this. And, and it, it's, it's a discussion that enriches both people. Um, and even if you don't like the individual, you know, let's say you see someone that you really don't like the work of or you don't like the persona of, going up and asking them a question is probably going to yield so much more to you than the alternative. But we want to show everything on Instagram and, and social media and, and TikTok and whatever it is because we want, you know, we're all creatures of validation. We want to see the likes and, and the whatever the fuck it is. And I'm, I've done it too. I'm not saying I haven't done it. You know, I've, I've, I've taken a picture or tried to take a picture of John C. Riley, who I really admire. You know, I, there, there's a lot of people that I, I deeply admire, but if I were given the choice between asking them a, a compelling question and taking a photo, I would probably choose the compelling question for sure. That social anxiety, few will really know what that's like. People without fame will, will often experience social anxiety for their own reasons as well. But sure. When you say social anxiety, can you give me a, a picture of what that feels like in reality? Oh, sure. Uh, paint an image of it. You're very good at painting images with your words, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's um, very, you're enjoyable to listen to. You know what? Most my my social anxiety feels a lot like sitting in a sauna when it's just a bit too hot, like the sauna right before you have to get out. You know what I mean? It's, it's like this warm sort of blanketing feeling, but it's not warm. It's fucking hot. It's, but it's a blanket over me for sure. And it, it, it's this kind of 
it, uh, for me, anxiety is really present, even though I'm thinking about future possibility or past um, past actions that I have made. It is a consistent. Um, I'm living in this. 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 And so, in that way, it's almost blanketed over me. Um, and what I'll do for that anxiety is is I will activate my five senses. What do I see? What do I smell? What can I hear? Can I taste anything? What do I feel on my skin? And it immediately grounds me in the present. These things are grounding mechanisms that I really enjoy when I start to feel social anxiety. Have you learned that somewhere? Yeah, I think I did. Where, do you, where did you learn that? Um, well, I did, uh, I went to therapy. I've, had, I've gone to therapy off and on my whole life. Um, but he was a wonderful man up in Vancouver that taught me the sort of grounding techniques. And he's right. But I mean, it does, you know, it can be a therapist, it can be a father figure, it can be anyone that teaches you. Essentially, the root of it is be present, ground yourself in the present. It's such a great tool. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, all the Eastern philosophers and the Buddhists were trying to tell you to do this shit the whole time. Meditate, ground yourself in the present. You know, grounding yourself in the present is the greatest enemy of anxiety. What other tools have you learned from therapy? I feel like I can, uh, I can learn a lot from you without having to pay the, the, the therapist. To, sure. So, yeah. Well, that's flattering. <laughs> um, yeah, I try not to talk too much about mental health just in general um, because everyone has an incredibly personal relationship to it. And I feel like there's a lot of armchair experts on the internet right now acting like, you know, or diagnosing people or doing stuff like that, which I find ink. I, uh, that is so atrocious. I can't believe people even do that. Um, and I think the conversation about, around mental health, unless it's being done by truly a trained professional, is probably not the greatest thing to listen to. So with that disclaimer, <laughs> I will say, um, whenever I'm feeling heightened emotionally, I will take a break from whatever I'm doing. I will truly walk away from whatever I'm doing. I will tell if it is an argument with someone, I will go, hey, right now I'm feeling some heightened emotion. If you don't mind, let's pick up this conversation in about 20 minutes. Give yourself time. You know, I, uh, I try to approach everything with a kind of logos that, that, you know, allows me to think more clearly and calmly about what I do, um, which can be off-putting to some people uh, because not a lot of people like being met uh, with logos when they're heightened emotionally or being met with solutions when they're just trying to vent. Mm. Um, it's one of the first things you learn when you're in a serious relationship, yeah. um, especially as a guy, yeah. uh, for sure. For sure. Cause most, a lot of, a lot of us are solution based people, yeah. you know, um, I can relate. but I'll take a break. That's the, that's honestly the most helpful thing I've done. I've, I'll also try and remind myself of, you know, grounding myself in the senses or I will, uh, I'll remind myself that, one, you're not the only person that's ever gone through anxiety or will ever go through anxiety. And two, um, the problem as you perceive it, the, the vastness of the problem as you perceive it is not the way other people perceive it.